Welcome to Jyoti Hydroponics Farm videos. Let's get started to get better at farming. In our previous video, we had learned about how to buffer our cocoa peat. And in this session of video, we will learn about how to use that buffered cocoa peat for growing our crop. Now, make sure that you don't skip any part in this video. If even I'm giving a pause, just have a look so that you have the clear picture about what is actually happening. And also, I would be very grateful to all my viewers if you just go ahead and share this channel as much as you can to our all emerging farmers, because I can promise you that this would really help everybody a lot if they are really planning to get into a new technology of farming. So let's move forward and experience the new style of farming here. So here, what we have done is we have made small mountain type structures with the buffered cocoa peat that we had buffered in our previous uh, video. And this buffered cocoa peat is mixed with perlite and vermiculite. And this perlite and vermiculite gives an extra air bubble to our plant roots that will be growing in this cocoa peat. So as you can see there, the man there, he is sprinkling all the perlite and vermiculite on the cocoa peat. And these people here sitting just next to the mountain here, they are, they are also doing the same thing. So we have divided all the section with separate mountains so that our man force, they have separate places with a separate work, uh, po uh, work position, I would say. So each mountain has different workers sitting onto next to it and they will be mixing it. They'll be filling up the bags. They'll be then arranging it normally as it is and then we'll be arranging it in a proper way and i'll sh let you know how we do that now these are the saplings these are the bare roots actually that we had uh, brought up from uh, the mountains or there we ordered these from our vendors now these bare roots we transferred them to simple cups uh, and we added cocoa peat into it and these bare roots are being converted to saplings so the only converted saplings will be transferred to our grow bags with these uh, buffered cocoa peats. So I'll just show you now. Uh, as you can see again here, they are just filling up the bags. So you can just take an idea here or you can build up your own how you can fill it up because I first sterilized the complete polyhouse and then I transferred all these cocoa peat structures here. And from there, I mix the cocoa peat with uh, perlite or vermiculite and after mixing it there itself in the sterilized environment then I filled up my bags and after filling up my bags I'm just waiting for these bare roots to be converted to these saplings and so that I can transfer uh, them properly to my uh, cocoponics setup. Now here uh, you can see that, that I have made sure that the cable as you can see here these cables here uh, one is this one and the other one is this one and this one is placed in such a way and it goes straight to the end and just adjacent to it we just touch the grow bags here and we place it in such a way that our complete grow bags they are placed in a very linear style so each grow bags has a very good spacing with the help of these cables if we are able to manage it properly so it's in a developing stage right now, so it's not looking that uh, what we call as in a symmetric form. But again, it's just a uh, idea that we took so that we have a good placement of these grow bags. So you'll be able to see that uh, here, as you can see here, half of the uh, polyhouse that has been already taken care of. This is so symmetric. This is completely straight here because this has been already done. And the other part that is being taken care of. So that is how it's being done. So now just have a look here how it has been done now here what is being done is our saplings they are being ready now these saplings they are being transferred from these cups which we had grown earlier uh, to our grow bags all the grow bags they have been placed in a symmetric form and now these cups these are ready with our saplings as you can see these are very good saplings that we have made yes we had a loss of few bare roots because 
uh, there is not always 100% conversion, but uh, we had almost 80% of conversions that we were able to uh, uh, manage. And after we had 80% conversion, we took only those 80% and these 80% were fully taken care of. There was no mortality after transferring these saplings to our Crovax. Rest, yes, of course, we had 20% mortality. So I would say uh, like 20% uh, abortion of the uh, bare roots. So we have to be very careful. Yes, of course, we can. If we take a little bit more care, I think we can have approximately 95% uh, uh, conversion from bare roots to saplings. But I wasn't able to give that much of time to my plants. So that was the reason why there was 20% abortion. But still, we had very good numbers. So there was nothing to worry about. But again, uh, I tried my level base to have a kind of different type of drip, drip system for my system, but I won't suggest you this one. Go with the uh, arrow drippers with one LPH. Yes, of course, these are also a kind of one LPH uh, PC drippers, but they are not arrow drippers. They are specific drippers that I've given to my uh, each grow back just because I wanted to be a little bit cost effective at an initial stage. So that's the reason why I did this. But as I have a practice of doing farming a lot, so I was able to manage it. But if you are a new farmer, I would rather suggest go with arrow drippers only because that would really make your work very easy. I'll come up with a new video as well for the strawberry setup because there are uh, there are little bit drawbacks in this because when the plant grows you will see that the strawberries that are hanging uh, uh, in these uh, in the setup those strawberries it becomes very difficult to actually manage them because one side is easily manageable but the other side what happens is few of these strawberries they are uh, they what happens is they drop themselves on the cocoa peat on the wet cocoa peat so that strawberry that actually uh, rottens because of the wet moisture of the cocoa peat. So to avoid that, we have changed the style of strawberry farming a little bit. So I'll show you that in my later videos, you will definitely love them as well. So this is a, just a kind of uh, a brief idea where you can, which you can really adopt in your own way. You can redesign it yourself because farming is all about redesigning and it's all about the style that you can use to upgrade your skills because even i'm a computer engineer as, as i said in my first video so i just use my skills to develop it and i'm still developing it so this is the best part here so if you are really an emerging farmer i would suggest just go ahead and uh, try your new ways the and trying new ways doesn't mean that uh, you uh, you have to be very specific to any of the ideas you can go with any idea unless until you are able to maintain your nutrition part your uh, humidity your environment your natural control temperature that actually plant requires if you are able to maintain that i think you can do miracle in the farming. So this is what I did here, but only the big, biggest drawback of this farming was my few strawberries had to face some issues with the wet structure of this cocoa peat. So just to avoid that, I just changed them. I changed the style of my grow bags in the uh, next farm. So I'll definitely share that as well. But definitely this was one of the easiest setup that made me handle it very easily. Now, after setting up all the saplings, I made sure that all my saplings, they are watered properly. So after watering them, I made a foliar spray to, uh, I made a foliar spray for all the strawberry saplings that I had transplanted to my grow bags so that uh, there is no disease uh, transferred from these workers to my plants. So I made a uh, organic spray of uh, fungicide to my uh, strawberry saplings and make sure that when you do that uh, foliar spray you don't have to completely wet your plants 
you'll have to move a little bit faster because these saplings they are very small so we cannot uh, consider it uh, we cannot consider it as a big plant and st uh, we stay on one single plant and do foliar spray for a for approx 5 to 10 seconds here you just need to have your machine in your hand and just walk and just do a foliar spray to all the plants so that all the plants they have all the sprays uh, of fungicides and they are treated well that's it nothing else as you can see how he is doing you'll just i'll just show you here as you can see see he's just walking and he's just doing a simple foliar spray here so when the plants they are at a sapling stage i mean they are very small and they are in the process of coming out of your system i mean in a good growth uh, state that time make sure you do foliar spray a light foliar spray not a heavy one because we do not want to block the pores of our plants we want it to transpire we want it to breathe we want it to do its photosynthesis proper uh, we want it to do its photosynthesis process very properly we do not want to avoid that now here as you can see here i have made four sections one section for the uh, foggers uh, it's going on the top so one section is for the foggers and below i have given four separate sections for uh, my fertigation as you can see here i'll just show you once again this is one section of foggers only so that is easily taken care of so i have given one specific section with one uh, entrance only i mean with one uh, tank to my foggers and rest four sections i have one tank connected to each four section so one by one if at any point of time if i don't want to give any one section my nutrition so i would just i would just close that section and give uh, specific sections my fertigation so that is how we control it so that makes it makes my work a little bit easier because in future if I want each section to have separate crops I can do that as well but here as I have all strawberries installed in my setup so I just keep all my sections open with the walls I make sure that all my all walls they are open and I give same nutrition fertigation to my all strawberries now as you can see here how he is going here he is just making sure that each plant has a good spray so he's just doing it so just have a look here how he is doing so so that you have your clear picture here how you need to make your worker do the same thing so these people they are very expert and they are very expert with this foliar spray so we cannot deny that as well it becomes very difficult for us to actually just have a 15 kg or 18 18 liters or 15 liters of weight on our uh, back and then we do foliar spray but these people they are very expert and they do it very well and with a very good accuracy because they have practice and they actually know uh, which plant is not missed which plant is missed and they take care of that while just doing uh, the foliar spray so this is how it's being done and he'll be very happy here uh, after he sees me that i'm making a video of him so just have a look here how he's doing it see uh, how he does it he takes care of each and every plant These people, they are very much perfect with their jobs. So make sure whenever you get any a layman or the people who do not have practice of doing this, first make them do a, a little bit practice on first part of your plant so that they don't destroy all other plants. So just see how relaxed he is. One hand in his pocket and other hand he's just spraying it. We'll end the session here now. And let's catch up in our next session. Till then, goodbye and happy farming. Thank you.